here we have MetaTrader 4 loaded and ready to go. And when you first come to a chart uh, for the first time, it might be a little intimidating uh, trying to sort out you know, what action to take. But the first topic we're gonna cover today is really just understanding that charts are really nothing more than a representation of price. So when you first start trading, or if you start following the financial markets, perhaps in the news, but yet but haven't really jumped into trading just yet, you probably are more familiar with price action and prices. And this you can see here in the market watch window of MT4, okay, we see the bid and the ask price, also known as the sell price and the buy price. So bid is another word for sell, and ask is another word for buy. Okay, so that's how you can separate the two. Uh, a trader who was interested in selling a particular asset or a particular instrument would be clicking on the bid price to sell. Uh, a trader who was interested in buying uh, a certain asset or instrument would click on the buy price and that would load uh, the appropriate uh, trade for them. Now, with charts though, we're not really yet at the point of buying or selling. Okay, we're doing a little bit of uh, chart reading first, right? That's why a lot of people come to the charts to begin with, to help in their decision making. And how does how do charts help people in their decision making? Well, first of all, it it gives you, if if nothing else in the beginning, it gives you a representation of what a certain instrument has been doing historically, how it has been moving, right? Uh, uh, you know, a lot the very basic terminology we hear in trading all the time is buy low and sell high. Well, how do I know if a particular price that I'm seeing right now in the market watch window, for example, for a particular asset, how do I know if that price is low or high? You know, you need some perspective, right? And the charts are going to give you that perspective that you need. It will they will tell you whether over a sh the recent past or the far distant past, whether uh, you know a particular instrument has you know further to fall, whether it has a long way to rise, and can tell you uh, whether it, it is high or low at a particular point in time. And this will certainly help in giving you the perspective you need to move towards the ultimate trading decision point, which is where we all want to get to. So. You know, for example, here we can say we can pull up a monthly chart, and we're going to look at time frames in a second as well. But just a monthly chart of dollar CAD, US dollar, Canadian dollar, has been a very popular pair to trade here in 2020, one that we talk about a lot. Okay. Uh, I'm seeing right now on the monthly chart a visual representation of what the price has been doing on a monthly basis. So for those of you that are new to charts, if I'm looking at a monthly chart, what that means is every candle, okay, in this case, we're looking at a candlestick chart, every candle represents one month, okay? And the same would be the case if you happen to switch to a weekly chart, a daily chart, okay, these steps you can take up here by clicking on these different tabs that represent each particular time frame. Uh, so we have the monthly, we have the weekly, we have the daily on D1, we have the H4, which is the four hour, we have the H1, which is one hour, M30, which is a 30 minutes, M15, which is 15 minutes, M5, which is five minutes, and M1, which is one minute. So as you toggle between time frames, essentially what's happening is you're changing the time frames that each bar or each candle on the chart represents. That's what you're changing. And so naturally, as you go to a shorter time frame on the chart, okay, you're zooming into a shorter period of time for a particular asset or a particular instrument. As you go to longer time frames like daily, weekly, monthly, essentially you're zooming out. You're going to longer time frames. And as you go to longer time frames, what is that helping you achieve? Well, that is giving you a more a more precise picture of what the big of of what the big trend is in a certain instrument. Uh, and as we can see in dollar CAD, we had a really nice uptrend going back several years ago that has met some, you know, what we would call resistance and now looks like it could be topping out and we could see some type of price action reversal. 
And so a lot of traders uh, these days, when they're looking at price action on a chart, are looking for things like reversals. They're looking for confirmation as to whether a particular trend is going to continue uh, or it's going to reverse. Uh, in this example, we're looking at US dollar, Canadian dollar, but certainly there's numerous other instruments that we can look at from currency pairs to uh, stock indices. So for example, here we have the CAC 40, okay, which is the French stock index, okay? Uh, we can pull up a chart window of the CAC 40 and we'll see, uh, you know, another set of price action. OK, here we had a one hour chart load. If I wanted to look at a monthly kind of what I did with dollar cat, I can click the monthly time frame. And so uh, the key point here is that charts are a visual representation of price and that they give you perspective of whether a chart is you know, at a particular point in time, optimal to be considering to buy a particular, uh, a particular instrument or to sell a particular instrument or to take no action at all and perhaps look at another opportunity with another instrument. So that's why charts are really helpful. They help you decide when it's a good time to trade and when it's not a good time to trade. So getting back to our topics here. Now we're going to talk a little bit about bars, candlesticks, and lines. So when you pull up a chart, okay, you have an option uh, and you have, well, you have many options when it comes to the settings and what you can do. Uh, but one of the more uh, asked about uh, settings relates to whether I'm going to use a particular type of uh, candlestick on a chart, whether I'm going to use a bar chart, whether I'm going to use, uh, you know, uh, something different than that. And here you can see you can toggle between the different types of charts. So right now, I can switch this to from a bar to a candlestick chart if I so choose. I can switch it from candlesticks to lines. Okay, a line chart, you know, I will say that line and bar charts are less used in modern day trading, uh, primarily uh, in deference to or in favor of candlesticks. Okay, because candlesticks give us a visual representation you know, that bar charts and line charts struggle to a little bit because candlesticks will tell us with colors basically whether a chart has over, <clears throat> excuse me, over a certain period of time has closed out of a particular time frame higher or lower than where it opened. And that's what a lot of traders really are seeking when they're looking at charts is they want to know uh, for a particular time frame are we trending higher? Are we trending lower? And bar charts and line charts will help you achieve that, but they won't do it necessarily with the same degree of visual appeal that a candlestick will do. Uh, a lot of times I find uh, bar charts and line charts <clears throat> are more popular with equity traders, stock traders, and commodity traders uh, who have been using those types of uh, those types of charts in the far distant past where you know, before the advent of being able to run a chart online, really candlesticks weren't too much of an option when you're drawing charts by hand uh, or looking at charts in a different format rather than an online chart. So for that reason, candlesticks are, I think most of the time, what you're going to choose to use uh, when you're applying a different chart. So you would simply choose your candlestick, choose your time frame, choose your instrument. <clears throat> As you can see here, you might've noticed, I just pulled up a dollar yen chart, a one hour of dollar yen. If you wanted to go directly to a particular instrument uh, and pull up a chart for it, you can, uh, an easy way to do that, I can show you quickly. So for example, if you wanted to look at a chart of gold, okay, which is represented here by the symbol XAUUSD, right? I can just right click in MetaTrader 4 on the price of gold, click chart, then left click on the option for chart window, and boom, I have my <clears throat> gold chart. So this is a one hour. You can see at the top here the, the description of the chart. So if you ever, you know, want to confirm that you're looking at the chart that you that you want to be looking at, you can always see it in the upper left hand corner, okay, of the chart window. I can see here I'm looking at XAU USD, which is the symbol for gold. H1, I'm looking at a one hour chart. And I can see for the most recent period the high low buy close price of the most recent candle. Okay, or the most recent one hour, okay? 
So that should help you with determining you know, what type of chart you want to look at. I think if you're a beginner trying to decide between which one to use in, in terms of candlesticks, bars, or lines, I would go directly to candlesticks because a big part of trading involves, or excuse me, using charts involves technical analysis, which means you want to be looking at charts that a lot of other traders are also looking at. And I can tell you the majority of the market is using candlesticks. Okay, so if that gives you, if that helps in your decision making, I hope that does. Chart settings and saving layout. So this is an interesting topic because as you start to use charts more, okay, I know in the beginning you might not be very active with them. They might be helping you just to determine simple support and resistance levels. So for example, you might have heard the term support and resistance. If I'm just looking, going back to the same gold chart, I can see here that uh, gold is now approaching uh, what looks to be the most recent resistance level around 1750, 1750 US dollars per ounce, okay, of gold. You can see here just visually that we're approaching a resistance level. Uh, you know, a lot of times uh, that will be enough, you know, to, to achieve what you're looking for uh, with the chart. But if you want to do something more in depth, okay, if you start applying different indicators, for example, uh, and different different types of chart analysis, okay? So for example, if I come into the, not the time frames uh, and I get into the different indicators here, which you can see under templates, okay? So if I go to the charts menu at the top, you know, this is always a helpful menu I find in MetaTrader 4 because it allows you to just dive directly into the different charting aspects of the platform and not really get caught into anything else. So if you go to charts, if you go to that charts menu uh, at the time when you're starting to work on your layouts, go to template. And then under template, you can choose, first of all, your different indicators. There's also another way to start to, cho to choose indicators, which we'll cover. But, you know, let's just put, for example, Bollinger Bands. Okay, Bollinger Bands is one particular indicator, um, you know, that shows you for any instrument uh, two standard deviations. Okay, uh, and that's just some charting terminology. Away from the initial price action, you can see if the price action has traded, is remaining inside or has touched outside of a particular Bollinger Band. And that can sometimes aid in your decision making, especially if you're a trader that likes Bollinger Bands. As we know, there's many indicators. We could talk about other indicators like MACD uh, on an oscillating side or you know average true range, uh, which we already have on the chart here at the bottom. So uh, it really depends on the type of trader you are or the type of trader that you become uh, But when it comes to using charts. But most importantly, the key point here is that whatever you put on the chart, whatever overlays, whatever indicators, whatever settings that you put on the chart, you can save them, right? So you can always save a template and you can give it you know, your own particular template name, you know, Bollinger, one okay. and then you can always have that saved for you so whenever you want to come back to a particular template again you would go to the charts menu the same way we just did templates and then you can click load template okay and that will and there's bollinger one so we can save these templates as many as we'd like at one time and you know, you might find that certain templates serve you better in certain market conditions and other templates serve you better in other in, in different market conditions, which is why having the option to save more than one template is advisable. And as we enter 2020 or excuse me, as we get through the middle part of 2020, we're seeing all different kinds of price action. Right. We just we were in the middle of what looks to be a, a big V shaped move in the stock market uh, and we're seeing a big a big rise in the purchase of risky assets and risky currencies. But what if that's a trend that is imminently going to reverse, right? And you know, your Bollinger Band template isn't cutting it anymore. And you're really looking for something that's going to be more precise in a different way with different indicators. Well, then you might be looking to your, you know, your moving average template that also combines, you know, MACD, which is, you know, you're basically looking for some divergence in the MACD. And so you have cause to switch from one template to another template. 
uh, which generally speaking as a trader, with, with you know, going back in my own experience many years, it's more advisable to have different templates that kind of are applicable to different circumstances in the market rather than just dump all different indicators onto one single chart, which can really get messy and essentially overcomplicate your decision making, I think. And on the topic of decision making, okay, that's where we get into charts being a tool for technical analysis. And this is really, you know, an important point, I think, because a lot of times it's assumed, like when I'm looking at a chart, I'm going to perform technical analysis. But I know for many traders and my own experience, when you first come to a chart, you know, you're not really using it for that purpose. A lot of times you're really using it to cover what I discussed in the beginning of the tutorial, which is to get a grasp of the price action, get a grasp of are we trading, relatively speaking, at low levels for a particular instrument or at high levels? Is this particular instrument overbought, perhaps, either on the short term or long term side? Is it oversold? Okay. Uh, or neither, right? You know, so there are some key functions that the mar that the charts will serve for you in the beginning that I think is worth noting because in modern day trading, there's so much analysis that traders feel they have the, the it's necessary for them to perform immediately, especially beginner traders. Talking to so many beginner traders who were like, you know, show us their charts and it's like, wow, I see five or six indicators on one chart. And, you know, what are we trying to generate? What are we trying to get out of this? Um, when in fact some big, some bigger picture, uh, things are going on with a certain particular instrument that they should be taking note of first, uh, and kind of before drawing any conclusions from a range of different indicators. But once you get into the technical analysis side, um, that's really where you can start getting more, um, you know, specific with indicators. You can right click. So I, I showed you how to go to the charts, the different options from the charts from the menu at the top. Uh, we showed you how to go to them from the market watch by right clicking on the exact instrument that you wanted to load a chart from. You know, and then the final point I would say is if you right click on the chart, okay, this gives you a few different options here. But the one that I think is worth noting here before we finish is the indicator list. Okay, so you can click on the indicator list. You can change different uh, from one indicator to another. You can change the settings on different indicators. Uh, really a powerful tool. Uh, for those of you that want to get specific with charts. The other thing I wanted to mention is also down at the bottom, if you right click on any chart, you have an option referred to as properties. Okay. Now, again, as you start to use charts more and more, I think it's very natural, it certainly is for me, to become more uh, you know, picky with how you are looking at your charts, what colors you want on the charts for different candles, uh, you know, that type of thing. And you can see here, uh, we have, I'm using a green and black chart primarily with uh, white candles being, you know, representing upticks or up moves in a particular time frame, and uh, clear candles representing down moves or price action where the price closed lower than it opened, right? So that's what you're seeing here when you're looking at my charts. Uh, however, it doesn't have to be that way. So if you, preferred certain colors for your candlesticks, you can change them here. If you preferred certain colors for, if you're using the Bollinger Band indicator, for example, so right now you can see I have a red color applied there. You know, these are different, these are just preferences more than anything else. Uh, so those are always subject to change based on your preferences. Again, if that's something you wanna do sooner than later, you can right click right in the middle of the chart, scroll down to the very bottom, click properties, and start making the changes to the color schemes as you see fit. In today's tutorial, we will talk about Forex market hours. We will see in which time zones the Forex market operates and how it so happens that the Forex market is so different to any stock market in the way that it works 24 hours a day. For this tutorial, I really wanted to show you a global map of the world with the Forex sessions visualized on it. And because I couldn't find a decent one on the net, I went ahead and made one of my own. And uh, this is what it looks like. And I'll definitely share it with you by giving you the link to download it at the end of this tutorial. So on this map at the bottom, we've got a time axis. And the way to read it is from right to left, uh, because the sun rises from east to west. 
that axis uh, is in uh, GMT time. And then uh, we've got uh, the four main Forex sessions starting from bottom to top uh, as they commence through a new day. So the first one is a Sydney session, then it's a Tokyo session, then it's a London session, and then it's the New York session. So what can we see from this visualization of the Forex market hours? And how can we use this in our trading? Let's have a closer look at the sessions one by one and see what exactly happens over a 24-hour period on the Forex market. So the Australian session. You will notice that uh, the very first session to open uh, during any given day is the Sydney Forex market session. And Australians are the first uh, nation to wake up into a new day. It's still 22 hours, so 10 p.m. of the previous day in London when Sydney banks open up. So this means that if you live in Europe or in the US and it's Tuesday, then you can already trade the Wednesday Sydney Forex market session. And that's just a mind-blowing fact that I was very interested to learn when I first got into Forex. Also, you may ask, what about the New Zealand session? And that's a fair point. New Zealand is located uh, even more to the right from Australia. And the New Zealand session starts about two hours before the Sydney session. However, without the Australian session, the liquidity on the New Zealand market is very low. And so that's why people focus on the Sydney session rather than the New Zealand session. Moving on, the next session is the Tokyo session, which follows shortly after. This session is also called the Asian session because right after Tokyo, large economic hubs like Singapore and Hong Kong start waking up. The Asian session starts around midnight GMT when most of Europe is still in a deep sleep. And this is why you often hear European traders talking about waking up at 3 a.m. just to trade the Asian session before going back to bed. Also, you may have already noticed that some of the Forex sessions overlap quite significantly. For example, the Australian session and Asian sessions overlap for the majority of their Forex market hours. And the good news is that you can use this knowledge to your advantage. Naturally, when these two sessions overlap, currency pairs like the Australian dollar Japanese yen and the New Zealand dollar Japanese yen will have their highest volatility. The next session that follows the Tokyo session is the London session. Undoubtedly, London is the economic center of Europe. And it's essential that the European session is also called the London session. Moreover, by the time banks open up in Great Britain, other major economic hubs like Frankfurt, Luxembourg and Zurich have already started into their Forex market hours for the day. An interesting observation is that the Forex hours of the Tokyo and London sessions overlap for approximately one hour. And this varies a little bit for other European countries. And you can and you probably should use this fact to your advantage. This slight overlap means that all of the crosses of European currencies and the Japanese yen will have their highest volatility at the start of the European session. So if you're trading the British pound Japanese yen, for instance, you can simply carry out a few very powerful trades between 8 a.m. and 9 a.m. GMT, and then you're free for the day. And some traders actually do that. They capitalize on this narrow window of time when both sessions are open. They take the most out of the movements of volatile currency pairs like the British pound Japanese yen. And uh, then they finish their trading very early on in the day and um, they have the rest of the day for themselves. And finally, the last session to open up is the New York session. Forex market hours in the US start with New York and this is because New York is one of the biggest financial centers in the world and it is the east most major city in America. The American session also includes other major economic hubs like Chicago which is the world's largest derivative market and let's not forget about Toronto which is uh, a major Canadian financial hub. So what happens when you put more firewood into a fire? That's right, it burns even harder. And same thing happens here. New York and London are the two of the world's biggest financial centers. And the American session starts when the European session is only halfway through. And of course, you're going to get an extremely fast-paced and volatile market during that overlap. And once again, you can profit from this. A lot of the major pairs like the euro dollar, pound dollar and the dollar Swiss franc experience massive movements and specific patterns during this time. 
In fact, I created a holistic trading strategy for the British pound dollar just based on this one fact. The strategy is called Simple System Version 6.0 and you can find it in my Forex Robots course. It uses an extremely profitable pattern that I discovered for the British pound dollar and in that course I give it away for you, to you for free so if you're interested uh, definitely check out that course. And finally to sum up the Forex market hours let's have a look at the end of the New York session. As you can see even though the Sydney session and the New York session do not overlap they follow each other back to back and this illustrates why the forex market is open 24 hours a day if you take any time zone on this map at least one forex session will always be open and in the end i'd like to say that whatever your trading strategy is it is always beneficial to keep in mind the forex market hours of the four forex sessions this is because different sessions are dominated by different types of traders banks governments and as we discussed, different types of currency pairs. And taking this into account will certainly give you a competitive advantage over other Forex traders. So that brings us to the end of today's tutorial.